Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at uh, solving equations where you got to deal with sums and difference of fractions. All right. Best way, as, as usual, is to show you by an example. So here's a question. We've got solve for x if 3x minus 2 over 7 plus x equals 2. And as usual, guys, I'm going to show you a couple of ways of doing this. All right, so let's get started. The first method is where I have 3x minus 2 over 7 plus x equals 2. So the first thing I want to be doing in this case is I want to get rid of the x to the other side, which means I'm going to be ending up with 2 minus x. And of course, the next step would be is to get rid of the 7. So I have 3x minus 2 equals, uh, because 7 is being divided, on the other end, it's going to be multiplied. So I'm going to have 7 multiplied by 2 minus x. So again, remember, it's really important to put that bracket around 2 minus x. And from here, I should be able to start seeing things a little bit more clearer. Because I've got 7 times 2 is 14. And 7, minus, 7 times negative x is negative 7x. So from here, rearranging, I'm going to have 3x. Because negative 7x, when I bring it to this side, is positive 7x. And I've got minus 2 equals 14. So I've got 10x minus 2 equals 14. And then 10x equals 14 plus 2. So 10x equals 16. And x is equal to 16 over 10. So that is my answer for this one. That's one way of doing it. And I'm going to show you another method. So with this method, uh, where I've got 3x over 2 minus 2 over 7 plus x equals 2. Now, this method actually works uh, pretty much for any kind of fractions you're dealing with. Um, so some people might ask this, you know, why are we getting rid of the x first? Why can't we get rid of the 7? Uh, this goes back to the whole idea of operations. Like when you know your priority of operations, when you practice with it enough, you will kind of figure out why it is that we get rid of the x first before getting rid of the 7. However, there is another method that we can do where we can actually get rid of um, the 7 first. If you're going to get rid of the 7, what you want to do is you want to multiply every term by 7. So in this case, I'm going to multiply this lot by 7. I'm going to multiply this by 7. And I'm also going to multiply this by 7. And what you'll see or what you'll notice is First off, in your first term, your two 7s get cancelled out. And you're left over with 3x minus 2 plus 7 times x is 7x and 7 times 2 is 14. And now you have a nice linear equation to work with because you combine 3x and 7x, that's going to be 10x minus 2 equals 14. And then rearranging it, 10x equals 14 plus 2, 10x equals 16 and x is equal to 16 over 10. And as you can see, both ways, same answer. All right, and I'm sure there's different ways in which people will can actually show you, but these are a couple of the methods that I like working with. All right, one more example. So in this example, if I was to rearrange this, so what I have is rearranging it, I have 2x minus 3x minus 2, over 7 equals 1. So the first thing I want to be doing is I want to get rid of the 2x. So I'm going to have negative 3x minus 2 over 7 equals 1 minus 2x. Now, this is the part where, you know, I was talking about um, when you're dealing with numbers or negatives, you got to be careful where they are at. This negative 3x minus 2 really should have a little bracket around here just so that you got to understand that negative actually is affecting the negative 2 as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it up like this, negative 3x minus 2 over 7. Well, I know that 7 is going to go to the other side, so it'll be 7 times 1 minus 2x. Now I need to expand the brackets. So I have negative 3x plus 4, sorry, plus 4, plus 2. And notice how it, originally we had minus 2, but then now it's changed to plus 2. That is because of this negative sign here. So we now have 7 times 1 is 7. 7 minus 2x is 
negative 14x. So at this point, rearranging everything, I have 14x minus 3x plus 2 equals 7, and then 11x plus 2 equals 7, 11x equals 7 minus 2, 11x equals 5, and x is equal to 5 over 11. So doing it the other method that I talked to you guys about. So this is the one where I said multiply the denominator with every other term. So you have minus 3x minus 2. Once again, I'm going to put this in a bracket because of that negative sign over 7 equals 1. So now I'm going to multiply every term by 7. All right. And as usual, that's how this 7 gets disappe disappears with this 7. And what I'm left with, 7 times 2x is... 14x minus 3x minus 2 equals 7 times 1 is 7. So expanding this bracket, I'm going to get 14x minus 3x plus 2 equals 7. So 11x plus 2 equals 7. And then, as you can see, I'm working with pretty much the same thing on the left-hand side. So 11x equals 5 and x equals 5 over 11. And as usual, same answer, two different methods. Okay, one more example. And, but this time I'm going to have x on, on the denominators. So, because I've actually kind of kept x in the denominators and I've kind of kept them both the same. Now remember, when you have a fraction, and in, in the fraction of the denominators are the same, then you just add the new... Uh, add the numerators like as normally as it is because they'll be over one same denominator. What I mean by is like say for example if you have like 2 over 7 plus 3 over 7 you can write this as 5 over 7. Likewise in this case I've got 10 over 3x minus 1 over 3x so I could write this as 10 minus 1 over 3x equals 1. Rearranging this I'm going to have 9 over 3x equals 1. Cross multiplying, I have 9 equals to 3x. Therefore, x is equal to 9 over 3. And you can say that x is equal to 3. All right, so just keep that in mind. When you have denominators are the same, you can actually just put all the numerators together in one, um, one kind of equation. The other way I'd, I'd have done this is uh, also just doing it this way. I could have just went 10 minus 1 over 3x equals 1, 9 over 3x equals 1, because 9 and 3 are, well, you got you can cancel things out, they have a common factor of 3, I can replace that with 3 and replace that with 1, and what I have is 3 over x is equal to 1, cross multiplying it, I get 3 is equal to x, that's another way of doing this as well. So anyway guys, that's all for this session, any questions, pop it in the comments, and thank you for watching.